You are going to meet a terrific artist today, and she's going to do a fabulous street scene for you. Please welcome Robin Cheers. Hey, Robin. Hi, Eric. Thanks so much for having me. Come on. Yeah, you you don't look sleepy. You don't have a you didn't get loaded up on tryptophan yesterday. Well, no, actually, I I don't eat meat, so I fill up on all the veggies and things, and well, we uh, have yeah, small small gathering, so. We have that in common. I'm a. I'm also a vegan. So usually, oh. usually for Thanksgiving, it's tofurkey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of veggies, which is always good. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's right. Well, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too. Uh, so tell us about what you're going to do for us today. Well, I'm going to do a um, city street scene. It's actually a little scene I had um, uh, taken in Denver. And I think oh, I'll talk about how later. Okay. okay. <laughs> I think I'll um, I want to talk about how photos can kind of be deceiving us. And we have um, let's see the you know they'll often print very dark. Um, this one is kind of a dark yeah. scene, but I like the type kind of also that tunnel effect. And so right. I want to talk about composition and then how to um, you know, make photos work for you and how you can use them as a springboard, but, you know, invent your own colors if you even wanted to, or just way to be sure you're, you know, not painting it completely dark and, you know, losing, okay. there's so much color in all of this really. And we want yeah, to make sure. Well, if you were to that. paint that in person, it would look completely different, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Could you explain, uh, first off, uh, you've got, looks like you've got a fairly limited color palette there. Yeah, I guess I do. Um, I generally use a warm and a cool of each color. Um, and then I do have a little bit further down. Let's see if I. You don't have to show. That's uh, just that's a right. bit. So I have either, usually I use a Viridian or a Thalo. Um, usually it's been Thalo green, but I've kind of gone back into Viridian just to play around a little bit again. Um, I do have an Indian yellow on here, Hansa yellow, the permanent orange, which I like. And I, well, I should mention too, I, I don't use the heavy metal um, paints generally. I try to stay away from those. And I found substitutes, which I really like. And I, I do like this permanent orange a lot because it's a really pure and vibrant color and it's semi-transparent. Who makes it? Uh, this is Gamblin. All right. Yeah. And then a uh, naphthol red next to that. Um, red. Okay. Yeah. And then permanent uh, lizard crimson, ultramarine blue and my King's blue, which I just love. <laughs> and that, I love that color. It's really kind of an ultramarine and white mixed essentially but there is something about it that's just a little more pure pigment, I think. Yeah. And it's a great mixing color too, you know, to gray down an orange say, or, you know, add more blue to your Viridian. And so that uh, is a real fun color to have. And then I also have this uh, manganese violet. All right. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. And like I said, so I'm you're going to be painting on a panel. Yes. Yeah, and this is a Centurion uh, linen board, uh, which I, I like a real smooth surface, actually, because I, I use a lot of transparents when I start um, painting, too. I like to also be able to wipe back, um, and that's kind of one of the neat things about oil paint is just being able to work from really thick or really thin to very thick, opaque passages. Um, and I like, okay. I don't tone my canvas because I do like to be able to wipe back some and it allows, like when I have a transparent wash on there, it still allows the white, like the light will go through that paint and sort of reflect back off the white. And so you still get this beautiful color, um, in your sh shadow colors or in your darks. So... And like I said, this sorry, I might I wanted didn't realize my door was open over there. <laughs> so like I said, this uh, 
the photo I've got is kind of a rather dark scene. Um, you know, the camera did this. It decides hold what. It up. It... Just hold it up a little bit so we can see it real close. All right. Now we've got it. Yeah. Okay. Terrific. Yeah. So it's got a lot of darks. Um, and there, there is some color in there if you really kind of look. And so I'm going to be trying to pull more of that color out and enhance it. Um, and I've kind of also, I, I think a lot about design and when I plan. And this one lends itself well to kind of that, you know, the idea of having a tunnel composition, you know, so all, my focal point really is kind of going to be in right in here. Uh, where this light is framed and, you know, the rest is lots of darks, but we're going to make those pretty darks. And, and because the balance, so like if I, I did this no tan, <laughs> I'll just stick that up there. So I did a little no tan drawing and that kind of shows you, it really is, I'm focusing mostly on dark and a very small areas of light. And so most of the work and color and texture and things I'm going to place into this dark areas because they are the dominant part of the painting. Uh, and and can I you talk little... about the differences between darks in a photograph and darks in reality? Well, yeah, the, um, certainly in real life, when you're standing out here, especially in a city scene, those shadows are going to have a lot of color in them and light is bouncing of course you know off the buildings there's a plate glass window here and there's reflections in that um, and that's going to be bouncing more light in there there's a lot of light coming through the trees so you know if we were standing on that sidewalk we probably wouldn't have to be squinting in the sunlight but you know we also wouldn't be feeling like we were in this cave. Um, so, you know, we know the photographs will pick an area to kind of focus on. And I, frequently when I take a photo, I will aim into the light area and then everything in the dark will get very dark. And then other times I will aim into the shadow area to try to brighten up what the camera is seeing in the shadows. And so sometimes you kind of have to mesh those two to, you know, remember what it was like in reality. Okay. So where do we start? Ah, okay. So I, I'm just going to start my little road map here. Uh, I generally start with a little bit of line drawing. Um, and are you using a thin, will you be thinning your paint? Yes. Yeah, definitely. And I do start with some line. I'll just mix up a little semi-dark to, and I do a lot of measuring um, and comparing. I'll I'll be sort of I'll be sort of judging where this is going to fit. Make sure I don't get things too large. Um, I'm thinking about the perspective and just. place in some of the bigger shapes. And I'm not gonna worry over here, there's cars parked. Uh, I'm gonna treat that all to begin with as just one big dark shape, technically. It's, you know, so they say the top of the car there. And I pretty quickly, once I feel like I'm getting some of the lines placed correctly, I go ahead and start moving into uh, painting the big shapes. There's my tree. And I don't want to get real dark, so I'm gonna keep the paint thin and I'm not gonna go for my darkest kinds of dark where you know I might mix my phthalo green and alizarin and crimson and you can get like a really you know near black, um, colorful black, but I don't wanna do that. I definitely wanted to keep my palette a bit lighter. So even in the big shapes, I want them to be colorful still though too. So I'm gonna kind of keep mixing and grabbing different things on my palette. 
And I'm going to connect all of these things. And let's see, make sure where my water's kind of opposed. Another tree. And sometimes I, you know, want to be sure when I'm doing um, this, I want to be sure to kind of exaggerate some of these natural things too, like the this tree leaning a bit and this one's leaning back this way. And I kind of try to overdo that to make sure I get it because we have a tendency to go and start straightening things up as we uh, work. So I'm just going to make little placements here. To... And this is, I just make kind of consider this a gestural painting <laughs> to start here. I love the energy of it, though. Well, thank you. It's fun. It's a fun way to work, too. I did this years ago. I had to, I started to set myself a timer, even, um, to quickly get things blocked in because I could find that I would spend, like, a way too much time planning and thinking and, you know, working from area to area. And then I would lose my way. I wouldn't remember, you know, what was it in here that excited me about the scene. And um, so the faster I kind of can lay these, get it covered and lay these big shapes in, the faster I can get to the fun part, which is kind of like the icing on the cake. I get to play with, uh, you know, all the lovely little hints of light and dappled sidewalk and people and and also this way I cover areas quickly and loosely and sometimes those that are away from the focal area I just can kind of leave um, alone and I don't it may not take much to suggest that there's a doorway here or a, a frame you know of a window frame and things and you know, that kind of stuff I can leave to the imagination of the viewer more. Which I think is, makes things interesting for the viewer. I am kind of leaving that window frame a little bit. There's a note there, but I'm going to... Go ahead and get some of the darks in that that are reflecting, kind of like that. Although it's pushed off to the very edge, so I don't want to make it real obvious. But and then up here, whoops, I'm juggling my brush. And that bring in a tree here. These are not as dark. Um, even as the shadows, but there a couple of them will be. And that'll give me some nice dimension too to play with. Um, let's see. I'm kind of grabbing, I have multiple puddles beginning, and I'm working in between those puddles, or, or sort of modifying them as I move across too with the colors. Okay, now I want to, I do want to capture some of my little peoples here, and be sure, I think too often people will wait to put the you know, the characters in their scene to the end, and that makes it harder. You, they get much more stiff. I want to just gen generally uh, gesture where they are here. There's kind of a group. I can barely even see it in the photos. <laughs> this gets a little darker back there again. Maybe too dark. All right, now 
that is a right mess, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a mess, but it's kind of fun. I'll well, see what you do with right. it. Right. It's uh now I can start to pull out some different colors in the building front there. And I'm going to save my lights for the very last, really. So I'm, I'll be working up in value as I go along here. Okay, so I think I want to go ahead and start getting my my tree in here. I'm going to make some compliments there to get a nice kind of red-brown. Curious why uh, you don't just have a brown on your palette. Well, I... I don't really like to use the earth colors. I like to mix them uh, because I feel like, you know, they're mixed from all the, the same colors I have here. They're, so therefore I'm going to have a bit more color uh, yeah. in there. And these are going to echo everything else that's in the painting. Um, and I try not to always, you know, paint the, tree trunk in a completely vertical way, you know, going ahead and just changing my brush direction uh, already lends it. My, you know, painting here will already have some nice changes in color and texture. Let's see, the tree in the back is lighter. Mix it a little bit lighter. And I'm using a, right now it's like a number six round brush. And I like the rounds because they actually give me a chance to, I could lay it on its side like that and cover quite a bit of area. Or I can. Your particular brand brush you're using, it looks like it has a gold tip. This is a Richeson. Okay. Um, yeah, and so I can, you know, I can take this then too and, oops, wow, that was just pure color, but that's all right. Maybe it'll be cool. Robin, you got a worldwide audience. You got people in Israel, Norway, uh, wow. Egypt, Pakistan, India. Oh, man, so many places. Oh, Sweden. It's cool. Wow. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in and I hope that you all enjoyed it and get something from this today and it's so neat that we can get together like this through these you know videos you've been doing the live ones now and the, of course playing and sharing all the excerpts or the previews of some of the streamline dvds you know i think i think it's helped a lot of people not just get through you know this kind of being stuck at home, but, you know, helping connect and learn. I'm seeing some red in that shadow in there. Um, maybe bouncing off of that red building. That's where getting outdoors and painting really lends itself to helping because you can start seeing things that would have occurred that you can't see in the photograph necessarily. Yes, yeah. Let's see, so you know everybody's gonna be wanting to see me resolve some of these things. Park cars are sort of always a challenge. But again, they're just shapes. Um, there's kind of a Jeep like Orlando over here. It's a little lighter. But it's lighter, but I'm still keeping it you know, in the middle value to low. I don't want to yet put anything in that's too bright. Um, I'll save accents, you know, for later, even in the shadowy areas. But for the most part, I want to be sure I'm holding 
the correct values in the big shapes. No, too red. And some of this will get fun when we get to play this dapple light. So I'm going to start getting, I think, a little thicker paint going if I can. Do you ever get to a point where you're adding any medium? Yeah, I do. Um, well, right now it's I'm thinning with the uh, Gamsol Odorless Mineral Spirits. Um, and then sometimes I'll add, like, a, they have a solvent-free gel, which is good, or a Galcad Light. Um, sometimes even, like, a cold wax is kind of a neat, you can add some body to the paint and and it'll sit up and the brushwork can kind of stays on top, which is neat. There's, oh yeah, there's this dark back here too. Oops. All right, so we've got our sort of craziness. So I think I'm just gonna start on the left and top, top down a little bit there. And, Get a little bit thicker paint on top of my underpainting. Still using like the side of the brush regularly, uh, getting some a mix of color on here. I wish this wasn't rattling so much. <laughs> A little bounce in the. So as long as my values are correct in these areas, I can kind of really play with color, too. And I'm ending up making this a little purpley. I think I want to lean it more towards a red purples, though, than a, and that will counteract all those nice greens too. So everything's kind of growing now again out of these puddles I started with. As I lighten up too, I'm working my way <laughs> along with my color, the values of the colors changing a bit there. And I do a lot, of, I don't grab a lot of pure color to start. I, like to dull things out of, out of the complement a lot. Um, and I'm seeing some a little bit of fall color in there again too that's gonna also play off our more reddish scheme. And even with photographs I'll I squint like you would in you know, painting from life to, you know, help yourself see the value structure as well as to kind of, you know, if you look through your eyelashes or something, it'll take away a little bit of detail and you can just see and paint these blocks of, you know, shapes of color, which is kind of what I think about everything as just, a, you know, everything is just a shape of a color and if you get that value right and a color you like. Let's see. I'm trying to decide on what I want the back of this car. There's some red reflecting. Now his, uh, so this is quite dark in the And there's a dark shadow under. So I started kind of in the middle values, you know, like even, even all this. And of course, because it's transparent too, it's not as dark. So now I do have room to get some good darks in there for my really deep shadow areas where 
You know, there's cast shadows under these cars. Oh, I picked a hard scene. Why did I do that to myself? Uh, because you wanted to uh, push yourself to have, you know, thousands of people watching you doing it. Yikes. It's all right. You've got, you have about um, 15, 20 Ooh. minutes left. Time flies, doesn't Ooh. it? When you're having fun. Yeah, it does. It goes by quickly. Okay. It's fun watching you paint because just watching how you make decisions and how you're keeping things really pretty loose at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Still, it's all just about the shape. Um, and it, so it starts this way, a little bit messy. And then it, you know, you can, um, I start to then think still in the shape and putting just sort of blocks or or a little line or a shape here and there. Um, and eventually it will coalesce, I guess, into a, an actual look like an object. Um, so there's kind of a, yeah, and some of this I just have to kind of guess. And that's another kind of nice thing about the, shadows in this particular scene being a little dark. I don't have to decide or, or define everything. Um, I can just see, I think this, this must be a pot here. Um, oh, and then there's a, this post comes up, yeah. But if I'm not worried about making it look like a pot and a plant right away, there's some on the side. So I'm just basically making notes for now. Well, it's amazing how the brain fills in the rest of it. You know, just by putting that little highlight on the, the back of that car or truck or whatever it is, it's just, it just read instantly. They put, you, they put that highlight on it. It started reading like a car. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's, you know, it just, it doesn't take a lot and you can get, get there without having to labor over a, a drawing and, you know, making sure, oh, it, you know, and then you end up filling in the lines too, painting in the lines, which we don't want to do. And I'm not worried about edges right now either. And those will get saved for the end. Let's see, there's some bright reflections on this car. So at the end, when you put in, you put in your highlights and then you go in and you, you evaluate your edging and say, it's too sharp, too soft. Yes. Yeah. So I'll have to, you know, sometimes I might um, end up scraping through some things um, or softening. I have like a big chip brush that I might, you know, get in there and, soften edges and of course I, I want to keep my focal area to be the you know primary area where I will put in some harder edges and things let's see there's definitely some nice bright stuff here and then it gets fun too to play with the uh, you know, like sky holes and um, some of the effects. All right, so let's let's work our way across into some of these, so I can play with this dappled light effect a bit here. Oops, got a little muddy color in there, but that's okay. Well, oil is very forgiving; it can go right over anything. Yes. Almost anyway. Yeah. Boy, that napful you can tell is a really intense bright color for sure. It takes over. 
just need a touch of it and I keep forgetting that. I'm kind of playing with, you know, going ahead and having variety in these shadows. Uh, some warm, some cools, they can play off each other. If you squint down and you look at the photograph versus that shadow, it, what a big difference. And yet it reads, it reads the way you would see it in person. Yeah, thank you. All right. Now let's play with some light areas. Well, I still want to get this. No, all right, I guess. I'm just double checking the drawing here to and here you know I don't want to get into counting the windows and the exact uh, lines back there it's gonna you know people will understand what that is uh, I, it reminded me too like when you were saying how you know the brain automatically begins to kind of put things together well I'm reminded of uh, there was a wonderful article I guess that Charles Movali had written in in praise of painterly painters uh, which was it's it talks about that a lot that you know you don't have to describe everything and that um, you it almost is like you are uh, expecting the viewer to be smart enough, I guess, to, to figure out and to get on in the same place you were kind of. And it's just, a, it's quite an interesting art. I'm sure you can find it online. <laughs> so I'm kind of jumping into my lights, maybe a little too quickly, but I do want to show a bit of how I can So your light has just got a slight touch of yellow in it. Yeah, uh, both yellow and some of that permanent orange, um, keeping it real warm. I haven't yeah. really seen you use the Indian yellow much. No, I I don't know that I will today. It's a pretty intense, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it may come in, you know, maybe up in these trees when I'm getting these lights uh especially there's kind of a neat spot here that's would be kind of fun to play with having you know an effect maybe of uh you know a, a ray of light coming through there so i don't want a huge jump i'm going to dull those lights a little bit and put some over here that will help i'm just you know putting down these dots i'm seeing but I don't want them to be too bright and take away from, you know, the real bright areas. Right. That's always the battle is, are you taking your eye away from the focal point? Yeah. And you don't want to do that necessarily. And there's, you know, and I think about as I'm placing some of the lights too, I could go through and just, you know, okay, it's a, dark maybe black or navy car so I could do everything in kind of a blue blue lights or white light or something on there but I do want to think about you know reflections from the building and from the sidewalk up in there and yes there is influence from the sky so all of these are going to have a different sort of tone or hue I should say um, and actually also I'm seeing I'm seeing and thinking and enhancing this area up there is actually getting hit with tree reflections all this green now I just realized is hitting on the top up there I'm still using kind of a big brush which is you know also keeping me from getting too exact or tight with stuff. Um, 
again, I'm going to keep these a little duller. The thing with these kind of reflections too is, or a, you know, the dappled light, it can can be overdone or be a little too jarring. So I want to try to be careful about the, the jumps I make in the, you know, these are, there are areas here that, you know, are getting a lot less light through them. So we want to still keep this softer and less bright. Yeah, that's important. So we're at about a 10 minute mark. Oh no. Oh no. Just when it gets good. Well, I, I think, you know, quite a lot of pressure to paint in front of thousands of people. And also, <laughs> you know, that's not realistic typically to get a painting done in this amount of time. So you're making great progress. Okay. Well, I'm, I am going to put that bright there because I feel like that's shining right between a couple of trees. I'm going to try to demonstrate something like this to kind of how I might create that effect. There's some brighter bits back there. Let's see, do I have, I need to reference my own work in here. How did I do that? I'm going to put a bright, almost white spot in the center of that yellow now. And if I take my chip brush and kind of create an effect there like that. Uh, huh. Cool. That was, there's that light shining through. Yeah, it really does work. And you can do a similar effects in the, in the ground here. I kind of wish I had, I, I need to wipe back some there. Again, nice thing about starting on white. There we yeah, go. If you want it. <laughs> and just gonna fill that in a bit more. Again, these come a lot less uh, bright over here, but there's still some. So again, I'll, I'm going to come in a bit. That, and then come in real bright with a hot, hotter spotlight of sorts in there. Nope, didn't get it thick enough. There we go. I'm going to add a little touch of pink in there too, I think. And then back with the bright, bright yellow. No, nope, it's not showing. There we go. Well, the other thing, the key to brightness is having it surrounded by darkness, right? Yes. Yeah. And then two. Take a, we can remove some of that. With a little bit of solvent on there. And that would, let's see, there's a good one to, taking a little bit out sometimes gives you that sort of a halo spot effect. Yeah, nice. And then again, I can do some in these areas that are less bright, but there's still not too much. So since we're down to like the last five minutes, I'd be curious how you're going to handle that focal point area. Well, okay, I'll have a, a smaller brush here slightly. Um, 
I'm trying to get my little people in here. Yeah, they're just, I, I treat them all like one unit. There's, it looks like a dad with a little person on a bicycle here. Um, just going to combine those two. There's a guy back here. And then. And is there a reason for that? Is it just makes it, you know, connecting your darks or is that just makes it more unified? Yeah, I think, well, again, it's a big shape. I'm seeing them as a one unit. And then I can, you know, so I get the whole outside shape correct first. And then I can go in and, you know, add some, a different, perhaps, shirt color on the top up here. These are so small, I'm not even sure that's going to show up for y'all. Um, and you know, I put her, let's put her in a red so it kind of stands out a bit more brighter. And then I can use my lights to you know, go ahead and hit these shoulder tops. Of course, I need some of the background around them too to help finish that. Um, tiny head, <laughs> very small. Yeah, and then with background, so let's see, there's, it's not real dark back here, but. So I, I treat them as one unit and then I can, also it's a little bit like sculpting, I want to, you know, finish around them. Oh, there's another tree trunk back there. So that'll be fun to play with too, getting, you know, branches. And I can just let my brush twist around and get that. And then there's some lighter greens. Oh, that's dirty. Um, Okay, so now I've carved around them a bit. Uh -huh. And I need to get just kind of a white wheel there. So now I'm just, you know, again, these are just going to be really infinitely small, it seems, but there's basically a light side and a dark side to... And you didn't even have to get a tiny little brush to do it. No, yeah, yeah, luckily. Oops. It's hard to see what I'm seeing, but that helps too. I'm just kind of trying to gesture... Dad's leg. There's some shadow under them. So. Yeah, I, I liken a lot of this work to sculpting almost. I, you know, I'll, I'll come over with the background and I'll come back with my shape and it's kind of a lot of push and pull. Outstanding. Well, I think this is a good time to, to wrap up because we're kind of out of time. Well, but I thank think you we, so we certainly, much. it's amazing that you pulled off what you pulled off in such a short amount of time. Well, thank you very much. I am so glad to get to do this and, um, really appreciate it and I hope y'all have a great weekend
Um, it's it's, got lots of neat stuff going on all the time. Thank you. I hope that you'll um, you'll wait till the end of the day and then you'll post the whatever you finished on that in the in the comments. It'd be really terrific. Oh, that. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Thanks Robin, again. Uh, let's see if we have uh, we have your website. It would be robincheers.com. Yes. And, uh, so people can visit there for Robin Cheers. We also yeah. have uh, if you go to lilypubs.com or Lily Art Video and search Robin Cheers, uh, then you'll be able to find her videos. And also today yeah. at 3 p.m., uh, we're going to p- play a segment of Brushwork Secrets Unleashed live on YouTube and Facebook at 3 p.m. Yeah. and you'll be on answering questions. Yes, yeah. yeah it's a big, big day for you Black Friday. Yeah, right. At least we're Thank not you. out shopping. Oh, oh, yeah, no. Yeah, actually, I did a lot of that already. Is that a drum Getting set ahead. in the background? Do I see a drum set? Oh, yes. No. <laughs> yeah, I've exposed my ugly corner. Yeah, that's my daughter's. Um, oh, cool the musician and uh it sort of has not got a home right now so it ended up in my room here <laughs> with all three of us at home too it's you know we gotta carve out space oh i know it's crazy time yeah well we wish you well and and again happy belated thanksgiving and happy black friday and uh, i appreciate you doing this for us today 